In this video, I'll show you how to set up step by step your Epson EcoTank ET3850 and how to use all the features. So how to print, how to scan and many other things. Let's get started right away. So over here, I have simply unboxed the printer. This is how it comes. First step is to remove all the blue plastic tape that you see over here. To remove this blue tape, you need to lift the top panel and simply pull it out this way. Take the power cable and connect this end in the back over here on the right side. Then plug it in your wall outlet. Now it's time to power it on for the first time. Select your language. To do that, use the upper arrow or the arrow pointing down and the OK to select. Now we're going to select continue setup without the app. So we'll press OK. I'll show you in just a few minutes, by the way, how to connect your smartphone to this printer to be able to print and scan. But for now, we'll uh, do it this way. Then press OK. It's time to fill up the ink tanks. Press OK. And now before selecting proceed, we'll fill them up. On each side of the printer, you're going to find this gap. OK, there is another one over here. All we have to do is to lift the top panel of this printer. OK, lift it completely and it will stay in place. Then go ahead and open this small protector cap that is covering the ink bottles. If we take a closer look, it's very important to use the right ink bottle in the right ink tank. So over here we have black, cyan, magenta and yellow. Do not mix them up. Let's start with the black ink. So we're going to open this blue cap simply by sewing it open like this. You're going to unscrew the cap. And don't be afraid, by the way, this ink is not supposed to leak even if you tip the bottle, you see? All you have to do is to place the bottle upside down right over here. It doesn't matter if you do it like this or the other side. So let me demonstrate. And once it's in place, the ink will start flowing automatically. Do not squeeze the bottle. Do not shake it either. As you see, it's it's currently going up. We simply have to wait until it reach the maximum capacity and you don't hear any ink flowing out of the bottle. All right, it has stopped. Now all you have to do is to take the bottle and you don't have to be fast. Again, there won't be any ink spillage. Take the bottle out and simply put the cap back. There is still some ink left in the bottle, okay? Make sure it clicks in place as you just heard. There's still about this amount of ink. So keep it in a closet away for, from any sunlight and in a dry environment if possible. Obviously, if you're living in a tropical place, well, you won't have a choice, but yeah, keep it dry. Next, close the cap and open the next one. This is the cyan. Same thing over here, these bottle, these colored bottles are smaller than the black ink, but there will still be a bit of ink left in them at the end. So I'll go ahead, unscrew the cap and place it right over here. As you see, nothing is dripping. Now, if you place the ink bottle and you don't hear any ink flowing and you don't see any ink going in the ink tank of the printer. What you can do is slightly wiggle it this way. It happened to me in the past and by doing so I was able to uh, make the flow going. It's very rare and it should not happen regularly. Okay, we are done. Same thing. Take the ink bottle out. Screw back the cap until it clicks. I don't know if you see, but there is this amount left. So you'll be able to refill it 
usually in a few months or depending how fast you're going to use this ink. Let me do the rest. So we have magenta. Again, it does not matter if you put your ink bottle this way or that way. It will work no matter how you put it. And finally, we have the yellow ink. And we are done. You can simply close back this lid first and then lower the top lid by pushing on it. The ink has been filled. Select, proceed and press OK. Now it says over here, press the question mark during five seconds. So I'm going to press the question mark button during five seconds. Press the start button right over here by clicking OK. And now you'll have to wait, as it says over here, 10 minutes because the ink will enter the system and the, the printer will get initialized. Initialize. So let's come back after 10 minutes has passed. Then press OK and select Adjust Later. Press Dismiss and then OK again. Now it's time to input the paper in this printer. You're going to put your fingers in this gap and pull the drawer. This drawer comes out almost completely. Today I'll input some regular US letter size paper. So what I'll do, you see these plastic guides are moving. You'll need to pinch this blue one and push it towards the extremity of this drawer so the paper can go right over here. Take your stack of paper, align and simply gl glide the whole stack in between the two blue guides. I mean, one is blue, one is white. If you're going to use legal size paper with this printer, you'll have to extend this small gray tab over here. And you see it says LGL for legal size. So the paper will go and stop right over there. You also have to keep this door open if you have legal size paper. But in my case, this is US letter size. So I'll simply close it and put back the drawer inside. Just like that. One time comes to print, you'll have to deploy the output tray. This is where the result will come out of the printer. Then once you have input paper, you'll be asked on the display of the printer to confirm the size and type. So over here I have US letter size, eight and a half by 11. So I'll leave it like this. But if you want to modify, simply press OK. And you'll be able to choose another size if this is what you have put inside. And then you have paper type. In my case, it's simply plain paper. So I'll leave it like this. But if you're printing on glossy, go ahead and change this. Once you finish, go ahead and select done on the top right corner how to connect, how to print and scan using your iPhone and your Epson printer. First thing we need to do is to connect this Epson printer to the same Wi-Fi network as the one that your iPhone is using. So let's go over here. Press the home button so we start on the same panel and then we need to select this icon on the top right corner. So with the arrows, I'll go ahead and select it in red the way it is right now and then press OK. Make sure to select Wi-Fi recommended. So make sure the settings is in red and press OK. Then select Start Setup. Select Wi-Fi Setup Wizard. Press OK. Wait a few seconds. It will scan for all the different Wi-Fi networks that are currently uh, around the printer. Once it has found your Wi-Fi network, by the way, you can use the up and down arrow if there's multiple ones that it has found. Select it with OK, press OK again, and now it's time to type the password of your Wi-Fi network. At the end, once you're done, select OK and then press the OK button. Go down and select Start Setup. 
then on your iPhone you need to download the Epson Smart Panel app. If you're using an iPad, it's the same app. So go ahead, download it, launch it. You may have to accept a few different things as the app to use your Bluetooth, your location, stuff like that. And then you'll have this page where it will scan for all the different Epson printers around you. Your Epson 3850 should appear in the list. Mine is right over here, so I'll click once on it and it will be added to the app. As you see here, there's a blue check mark. Press OK. Now they'll ask you how do you want the app to look, so the main menu page. I suggest you use this one over here, the lower right side, use tiles. Okay, you are using the last firmware because it will check to see if your printer is up to date. Press OK. So, okay, they will try also to sell you some stuff. Let me just close these screens. It's not important. They're annoying. So this is the main menu page of your app. Um, to interact with this app, basically you just have to select print or scan. The other stuff, most people will never use them ever. You can also have your ink levels on the top Okay, you can click on your printer and you can see them exactly. This is pretty handy. Let me show you how to print and then I'll show you how the scanner works. So to print, all you have to do is to select print. Select if you want to print a picture or a document. In my case, it's a document, so I'll select that. Go ahead, find whatever you want to print in the memory of your iPhone. And now before pressing the blue print button down below, we can change a few different settings. So over here we have a cogwheel, lower left side, tap on it. And we can change the paper size, in case it's not the right one, the paper type, if you want borders or not, the print quality. So if you're printing pictures with this printer, I suggest you go in print quality and you select high. Because if you don't do that, unfortunately, some um, details may be lost while printing. So make sure you select this. Once you select high, it will also take more time to print, unfortunately. For anything that is text documents, you don't have to select high. Standard is enough details. And then you have other things like if you want in color or black and white. And if you want the pages to be printed on both sides of uh, the paper. In my case, I don't want, so I'll put it off. Before closing this, we have the number of copies. I just want one, but if you want many, well, just enter your number over there. Press done, and now select print. Usually it takes around 12 seconds or less to print, so I'll just extend this. And here we go, it was pretty quick. Obviously, if this was a picture, it would have took maybe double the time. But yeah, we got our print. Now let me show you how the scanner, actually the scanners are working because there's two of them. So this printer has two different scanners. The first one is a top document feeder on the top that you open by flipping this. It's able to take up to 30 different pages. Okay, you can put a stack of 30 pages, slide them there and it will be able to scan one by one. I'll show you how it works in just a few seconds. But I just need to mention, you also have a normal scan glass like this one. If you want to use this scanner glass, all you have to do is to place the paper facing down with the top part of your document towards the right side. And then all you have to do is to bring the corner of your paper to the corner that has an arrow. So once both are touching, you know that your paper is properly aligned. If you want to place paper in the top document feeder, imagine that I have a, a stack of these. All right, you're gonna place it facing up this time with the top part of your document towards the left side. And then all you have to do is to glide it inside over here, just like that. On the main menu page of the app, you're gonna select scan. You're gonna have a few different settings. The most important ones is the document size if you want in color or black and white. And over here, the, the resolution. So if you're scanning pictures, I suggest you select high at 600 DPI. It will give you the best results. 
Unfortunately, if you select 600 DPI, it also means that it will take a lot more time to scan, sometimes 40 seconds for one page. And if you select 600 DPI, it also means the files will be big. It will take a lot of space. So for anything text like the one I have over here, 200 is enough for most people. Then we have remove background. Don't touch this. It's not very useful. It doesn't work that well sometimes. We have automatic rotation. You can turn this off. We have placed the paper. I just told you how to place it. This is in case people place their uh, paper the way they want and uh, the scanner will rotate the page at the end. Anyway, then we have image format. So you can select if you want a PDF, JPEG or TIFF. I'll keep it PDF. And at the end, press the start button. Usually the scanner, uh, I mean, the printer will detect where you have placed your pr uh, your paper on the top or over there. But if you see that it's confused, you will be able, you were able to select it on the top um, to guide the printer. So over here it has scanned my page. Here we go. If I look at the app, I'll get a preview. This is not saved yet. Don't uh, close the app yet. So with this preview, we can delete it if we're not happy. You can even zoom in to see if all the details got scanned. You have crop in case you just want to keep a portion of your scan. And down below, you see you can add more pages to your document. So if you want to scan hundreds of pages, well, put the thir first 30 over here scan them you're going to have them all below take them away put the next 30 press the plus scan button and you can keep adding and adding to this document press next give your scan a name you can delete whatever was written there if you're not happy press done and now you have two different choices this is the share button. If you want to share it on social media with your favorite contacts, maybe over text messages, or maybe there's a specific app where you want to upload uh, your scan, click over here and you'll be guided and you'll be able to select the app. If you want to save the file on your iPhone, click save and it will save it in the internal memory of your device how to factory reset your Epson EcoTank ET3850. So let's get started over here. Press the home button once, then navigate using the right side arrow. Oops, until you select settings, press OK. And now we need to go all the way down this menu. Until you see restore default settings press OK and now we can reset only the Wi-Fi so if this was your issue you can you know it will preserve every other details but reset the Wi-Fi only or if you want to completely fully reset the printer select clear all data and settings press OK and as it says over here clear all data and restore default settings it may take several minutes continue select yes and then press ok the printer at the end will shut down will power on by itself and it will be like brand new you'll have to set it up again from the beginning if this video was helpful please take a moment leave a like subscribe comment and if you have a bit more time check my amazon links down below every time you purchase through them i get a small commission and it helps my channel grow Thanks again and have a beautiful day.